Hi friends, it's me Swastik, and today we're gonna make a bot which can solve a Sudoku puzzle. So let's get straight into it. Uh, this is actually a project which is uh, not completely beginner friendly. So if you want to watch the basics, you can click here in the card to watch the absolute beginner series. But even if you are a beginner, you could probably watch this video. I'll explain everything, so even the basics, uh, but not too deep into it, okay? So let's begin. So I just let me just show you the um, code which we're gonna write. So I just wrote this code in Sublime Text. This is a text editor. If you don't have it, you can get it. It's for free. Uh, I think I can link you to my Python video uh, where I showed you how to download that. So it will be in the cards now. So anyways, so uh, this will be the code. You can enter your um, um, Sudoku puzzle in this format, like uh, there are blanks, uh, you put zeros, and if there are numbers, you put the numbers right here. One second. I don't think most of you know what a Sudoku puzzle is. Even if you do, I'm just gonna explain it, just for uh, you know, some things. So this is an example Sudoku puzzle I just got. So this is actually a nine. Is, there are nine three by three grids in this uh, Sudoku puzzle. The goal is to put numbers in such a way that, uh, like for example, we can put one here, right? So we have to put numbers in such a way that numbers from 1 to 9 okay that the number only appears once in every column uh, and uh, sorry every row every column and every 3x3 three three grid okay so um, yeah that's the you know the rules of how to solve the Sudoku puzzle so we're gonna be doing that okay so first uh, how do we exactly put this board in our code right in Python how do we oh god this is really bad I know <laughs> but uh, why do we uh, how do we do this okay so well we do this in a, there are many ways to do this I'm gonna do it in a 2d array so what is a 2d array it is simply a list so if I just have a it's a variable okay uh, it's a list and uh, in this list there are gonna be many lists so it's gonna be like this Okay, um, for the beginners, a list is just somewhere something where you, it's just a data type where you store some kind of information. You can store lists and lists as well. So, and uh, let me just show you one thing because some beginners might not know this. So, if I just have a list, like uh, I know some numbers, one, two, and three. Okay, now if I say, what is this? You can put the indices of any number. So this would be the zeroth index. This would be the first. This would be the second. If I say a zero, so it will return uh, this value, which is at the zeroth index. You can also do something like this: minus one to get the last one. You can either write a two or a minus one. So that was just something for beginners. So how do we do this in an two D array? We can do like do it like this. We can have, uh, let's say, two lists in our array. So this one is one and two. This is, you know, uh, four and five. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll traverse through the first one. So this index would be for this is would be at the zeroth index, and this list would be at the first index. So if I say a zero, it will return to me the first list. So now if I say a0 and then because this is a list I can say the you know a0 zero, 0 this will return to me 1 it's the first uh, element in the list so like this what we could do is make put this entire um, grid uh, I'm gonna call it grid in the in Python like this so if if we had a 2x2 two two grid we'd be doing it like this so I'm just filling some numbers in, okay? So this will be the at the zero comma zero. So it's x and y position is zero comma zero. This will be one comma one, okay? So this is mostly the basics you'll need to know. You'll need to know for solving a Sudoku puzzle or any actually puzzle like in this format because we need this 2D array. We need to work with the 2D array. 
so let me just clear everything out and go to this code so the first thing I do is I'll import numpy as np what is this this is a module that okay you know what I'm not gonna explain this we don't really need to know this because we this was just there to show the grid properly I'm actually gonna let me just make a new one I'll code a uh, uh, no uh, code with it so I'll make it I'll open a file which will be in my projects folder I'll open a uh, sudoku tutorial .py. okay so now what we do is we get the grid so how do we show the grid so I'm just gonna solve this puzzle that I already have um, so it's empty 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 so for empty spaces I'm gonna put a zero and for numbers I'm gonna put numbers like I already said so if I go back here and copy this grid okay because I don't want to type the entire thing again this is one thing you know we could probably improve it, it somehow but so this is how I've written this grid so zero zero so many things okay so many numbers uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually gonna take this to the to the ideally and paste it here so we have the grid in here okay so we can operate on it so it's not really well formatted but this is how actually the board will look if you see so let me open up the uh, actual board close to me so that I can see okay so let's see let's see if we can traverse through this board properly that's something we want to do so okay this is a problem we could well we can just see here and do that anyway so uh, let's say I'm gonna go to so grid let's say I want to get this element okay this is the okay this actually we will write it as y comma x in the format of y comma x so y comma x why because we're actually the first the original list actually has a list of y values and then the each y value has a list of x values so for example for this one this will be the first element in the grid list so it will be zero and then this is the last element in the uh, gr uh, in the grids zero uh, list okay it's a little confusing but you'll get it so it's eight because zero one zero one two three four five six seven eight you could even do minus one but for math because we'll be using some math we'll have to do eight okay so if i do this i should get a zero and i indeed get a zero let's see if we can get a two here right well let's just get something more complex let's get four so how do we get this four it is at one two so zero one two three four five at the fifth y position so y position is five and its x position is zero one two three four five six so as you can see you got this back so this is uh, how we'll traverse through the list so let's make a function right okay what is a function function is simply um, some code that repeats itself again and again so we'll need to repeat lots of code so let's make a function this uh, this is the syntax of a function okay um, if you don't under oh, um, really dumb this is Python so uh, we will okay in this possible function we will give an X and a Y and an N okay so what this function does it will return true if we can put this N at that position okay so if we could put that n number where we whatever we you know say for example if I call possible here with let's say is it possible to put a 1 in the 0 comma 0 position so 0 comma 0 position is this is it possible to put a 1 here you'll see that it is possible to put a 1 here so this should return back true but if I say is it possible to put a 7 here right this should return fault because we can't put a 7 here because there's a 7 already down here so this should return a false okay so you know what we are gonna do in this function it's very important to know that first so we know that it will return true or false so when does it return false when uh, okay the first case is when it returns false is when okay let me just get this value thingy um, what is this value it's just what I said that whatever whatever the value is here we're gonna get that value here so if I said 0 comma 0 it will give me 0 at value so I'll say that if the value at the position which I'm trying to put it in 
the new value if it is if it is not zero that means that it is not an empty position we should return false because we can't put something already where there's something already there so we return false okay okay the next thing we're gonna do is uh, check for uh, columns um, a row sorry so how do we check for a row well we uh, have to go we have to say if uh, we have to go in our n right n if n uh, let me just write the code down so that I can explain it a little later okay so this means that if n so the number that we're trying to put it in uh, we're trying to get the number in here for example so if this number is in grid y this returns back a list with all the x's x elements in whichever y we put in for example when we put 0 comma 0 this will give me back the entire list here like I showed you so we'll say if n is inside that list right then we shouldn't do it right we cannot it's not possible to put it there so if n is in here we will not do that for example if I say 0 comma 0 and I try to put 2 in here this will return false because it is in the list we can't do the same thing for uh, rows though because rows are not actually lists they are different lists but the first element of each list right but not exactly the first element of each list it is the xth element of each list so if we take a z if we take uh, x as 0 like we were saying 0 comma 0 that then it would be something like this we'll go through every uh, so this is a for loop so we go through every element in grid okay actually should give it a better name we go through every row in the grid okay uh, we will go through every row in the grid and we'll say that if uh, our n any time is equal to the first element or to be more precise the xth element in that list so if it's zero then it would be if any time n whatever enter n we entered is equal to any of this right any of these is going to return false return false this is because like i said it cannot come again now we will have to check for the last thing you can probably execute this code and see if it works uh, i'm gonna check it so i'm gonna go possible i'm actually gonna print because if we print is it possible to put a zero comma let's put let's see if we can if we, if we can put a seven in here okay we should not be able to do it uh, sorry i'm gonna use cmd to execute this code so let me just open cmd and i will navigate to the proper folder okay, cd python projects uh what is the name we gave it i think sudoku what is it called it's called sudoku tutorial dot um okay i misspelled it somehow it is sudoku to dot pi it is that did it not get saved it is in that okay this is some weird issue i'm not getting it for some reason is it not in the file did i not save this what let me see here let me try to save it here file save as sudoku tutorial is it saved in here it is saved in there let's replace it and see if it works for some reason this doesn't want to work um, okay <laughs> it worked now so we cannot put a 7 in here it gave me back false because we cannot put a 7 here because already there's 7 there so we can see that it works now we have to find a way to check for this the grid 3 by 3 by 3 3 by 3 grid so each 3 by 3 grid there, sh 
shouldn't be you know any repeating number that's a little tough a little more complicated than just checking for the rows and columns we have to find okay so first let's just identify the number that the x and y position that we enter is in which of these grids right so if i open paint here so is it this in this grid is it in this grid or is it in this grid like this so we'll check for every single grid how do we get that so what i'm going to do is uh, make a root node root coordinate for each grid this the upper left corner of each uh, uh, each uh, grid is gonna be the root node I'm calling it the root node because I like it I don't know why so these are the root nodes so what are the root nodes if you notice this the root node of this one is 0 comma 0 the root node of this is 0 comma I'm actually writing it in the format of y comma x okay because it's we, we are traversing through the list like that but we're actually it's a little complicated you could probably change the way you're saying this but I'm actually gonna write it as y comma x but if you like it I can write it as x comma y as well so x comma y in that format it would be 3 comma 0 this would be 6 comma 0 okay and similarly this would be 0 comma 3 this would be 6 comma 3 6 uh, 0 comma 3 sorry 0 comma 6 okay as you can see we can check uh, we can uh, it's always the root node is divisible by 3 so we can uh, where do we have the root node so we can actually make a function here we can call it the root function it gets an x and y and it uh, returns back dx and y no that's not a good way of doing it uh, <laughs> it just uh, takes in a coordinate so I'm gonna call it c okay because you can do that so I'm just returning back uh, c again okay because that's a bad way of doing it uh, what I meant to say is uh, we will pass in a c c means it could be an x or it could be a y value Instead of doing it in here, I'll just do it in here. Let me just explain the math to you because it's a little complicated. So, but if we check uh, this one here, right? This one. I'm just going to delete everything else. Uh, that's bad. I tried to crop that. So, how do we go back? Uh, this. Okay. So, we, so we were finding this one, right? So, this has the x location of 2 and y location of 0 so how do we find the root node if we actually divide this number the x number by 3 right uh, we will get that um, it's not actually this number by 3 uh, it is 3 by this number okay so if we divide 3 by this number we get the remainder as 1 uh, right okay uh, this is wrong one second uh we have to yeah, i was correct uh, the, we have to do this 2 divided by 3 because uh when we divide 2 by 3 we'll get a remainder of 2 okay so we get the remainder of 2 so we okay i'm really bad at using paint uh we will we got a 2 for this okay i'm just writing the remainder down here okay so the remainder was 0 the remainder for 1 divided by 3 will be 1 correct so as you can see we can to get the root node we can subtract the remainder from the value that we got so for example if we have this value I'm just gonna check a different value okay uh, this is actually the index I was writing here this the actual remainder will still be 0 1 and 2 okay so whatever the X we got okay as whatever the x value is let's assume that the x value is uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay so the x value is 5 we will divide it by 3 okay so when we do that we will get a remainder of 2 here right we get the remainder of 2 so then we subtract this from the x and we will get our root node x minus x divided by x remainder 3 so it will be the modulo operator it will give me back the root node if you didn't understand this you could rewind and do it again 
but it will be similar for y as well because it's the same thing excuse me so uh, it will uh, for the y value it will be the same thing we will subtract y divided by y minus uh, y divided by 3 the modulo uh, means the remainder so we will get back the root node let me just write this down in code so let's have an rx the root of x which will be it's not actually root of x it's kind of like the root node thingy you can you get it right so it will be x minus x modulo 3 with the modulo operator it's about 5 okay and similarly it will be like this okay so this will return back the root node uh, root coordinates root x and root y now what we need to do is use this somehow to check this possible code okay so how do we do this exactly well we will go through a loop we have to go to through we have to go through two loops i and j i'm gonna call them like this call it x dash i'm well, just call it x dash so for x dash in range from the root node of x till plus 3 because we will be going we have the root node we have the root node right so we will be going back uh, from this uh, so this is the root node we have we will go till 2 here okay so we will not go here so but range the range function uh, works like the first number is included but the last number is excluded so we have to go for a plus 3 instead of plus 2 uh, then so for this we will go uh, I'm just going to copy this here because I can do that um, for y in range from the y thingy so now we've got all the coordinates that will be in that grid we can just check if n is equal to what do you have to check there? To check the value of that, right? So grid y comma x. Remember y dash comma x dash x underscore. So if this is true, that means it is in the grid. We will return false. But if we go through all of this and do not return false, we will return true. That means you can put it there. Right. Let's check now if we can if we can do this. So let me go back to my grid. Let me find a number where where. Okay, let me see here. Hmm. Okay. Uh, two, two, two. Okay. So. Um, three. If we did not include the grid one, if we just wrote, if we asked for three at eight comma eight, it would return true because it's not in this row, not in this, uh, not in this column, not in this row. But now if we do it, we should get a false. So let's check. So is it possible to put a 3 at 8 comma 8? Let's check. Uh, just run that again. We got a false. So this is great. It's working now. So possible function is done. So we can find what we, we can find the we can find okay <laughs> I mean I got confused <laughs> we got we can find if it is possible to put a number at a certain location so let's now get into the actual code I means this was actually the code but the logic of the how we solve it okay so now we come to the logic part which is gonna be fun okay I'm just gonna come back in a minute I'll pause this drink some water because my throat is ah uh, so i'm just gonna be back wait how the hell do i stop this um a very uh, how do i pause this oh wait what? okay i'm back <laughs> so let's continue again with this code now we have to find a way okay, so what is our plan of action okay so we're going to do this in a particular way, okay? What we're going to do is I have I need a function which can tell me how many values can be there in one uh, place. For example, if I just 
give that function, I'm gonna call that pre-solve. I can't write this, I'm gonna call it pre-solve. In this function, I'll give it, give it an x and a y, and we should return back a list of all the possibilities of numbers that could be put in that. Okay, so let's just try that function. Uh, where do we got that right here? So I'm gonna write a function called pre-solve that and takes in an x and y. It needs a list, so I'm gonna call it possibilities, and it's gonna call it pass. That's not a good variable naming, but eh, whatever. We go to for i in range, we go from 1 to 10, that is not included, so 1 to 9, and uh, we will check if possible, if it is possible to put. Uh, that x and y value that i value so it's gonna go from 1 to 10 if it's if any of them is possible uh, we will actually okay this is called appending to a list we add this value i to position well pause that is possibilities not position so after we if and enough i'll just return pause here inconsistent inconsistent use of tabs and spaces so I'll return boss. Okay, so I just return the possibilities. So instead, now I will print pre-solve. So I will pre-solve the uh, I don't know which way should be pre-solve. Let's pre-solve this first one. Let's see what we can put in this zero comma zero. Which uh, numbers we can put in the first index, first origin kind of thing. So we can put one, three, five, eight, nine. Let's check if it's correct. We can put a 1, that is true. We can put a, what else was there? We can put a 3, I think we can, yes we can. We can put a 5, but we can't put a 4 though because it's already there. So this function works. Great. Now, we've got this pre-solve function. Now we need to get our solve function done. Yay. But actually, before we solve, I want a new function. I don't really know what to call this function. I'm just going to call it function because I really don't know what's our... I could call it a lookup function. I will tell you why I'm calling it a lookup function. But... What is it going to do? Let me come back to my... Uh, thingy here. So what will we do here? Yay. So the lookup function will get a list. right? Instead of getting a list, it will get a y value. Let's say it gets the value 0. So it will, it will go through this list right and find all uh, actually it will go through this uh, row and uh, check for every pre-solve okay it will it will solve means kind of pre-solve all of these uh, blanks okay then it will upload them to a dictionary which will store uh, a dictionary actually stores key value pairs so it will no okay let me actually just get this back it will store Let's say one can be put in this row three times. Okay, it's an arbitrary value, but I'm just saying two can be put in this list four times. But three can only be put in this list one time. So after we've got this lookup, after let's just write the lookup function. So this will just return back this uh, key value pair lookup table thingy. Or maybe instead we could probably do the. Okay, I'm just gonna write this much and then come back here explain that again. So we we'll just look up. It's gonna get a y, right? Then it's gonna go for go through that y for mm, no 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 yes yes for x dash for x in grid y and we are using a global variable here, okay? Because grid is a global variable, so. We go to every x in that grid uh, y, so, uh, whichever row we got. We go to every x. We will actually need a lookup table, so I'll call it the L table. And let's just write this table down. So it's one. Uh, then it's so I'm just gonna write like the base cases. So it's zero. Okay, four, five, okay, five. Zero. Zero. And 
finally 90. So this is actually the key, which is our uh, how, which number can we put and how many times can we put it in this list in this row? So for x in grid y, we will. This is actually mm, should we go to the grid or should we go through the number? Right, cause okay, let me think here. What have I done in my previous one? Have I gone through the list in uh, where's my function here? Okay, I went through the list in ranges, okay. But wait, okay, yeah, I did that. Uh, yeah, uh, makes sense. Because I don't need to actually go through the grid here. I just need to go through the range of one of nine. By this, I mean zero to, nine, to eight, because it's nine is not included. I just check, I'll just check if I have a mistake here somewhere, because I think I do, though I don't. Okay, so I will now... Uh, if it is possible if it is possible no if uh, it is uh, if, if I do a P as a pre-solve if I, if I pre-solve that X and Y value right so P is a list which has all the possibilities so I'll check so I'll go through every element in that possibility in that possibility and then I will say uh, whatever the number is right in that table we'll uh, store that in so a temporary place we will so how can we get the number like the value for each key we can do this uh, by saying L so lookup table we will put pass that key in so I will be that key and then we will get a new one this will be whatever it was before so instead of doing it this way, we could just do it this way. So whatever it was before, we will add one to it because it was there in the possibilities. Okay. So what I mean by this is P was a list which had all the numbers which are possible for that uh, spot. So like this, no, these numbers are possible for 0, 0. So it will go through for that list for that whole row it will calculate these pre-solves like how many numbers we can put in each empty space and then it will put it in this uh, lookup table now we will have after the end of that we can we can see what are the what do you call that i'm just gonna print i'm gonna return now uh, this isn't done i'm just showing you guys so i'm gonna return the lookup table and I will print lookup for uh, the first one for zero. So look the first uh, look up the first uh, row. Okay, let's see. I look up the first row, and so one can be placed in the first row four times. Two can be not placed in the row because it might be already there. Yeah, it was already there. Uh, three can be placed five times. Four can be placed three times. Five can be placed six times. Six can be placed three times. Like this, it can be placed many times. Okay. So now we actually come to the solving thingy. How do we solve it? If I'm gonna come back to my code here. If, as you can see, three. Let's say that it can be only put here one time. That means only one place is there that can store a three. That would mean that the only place the three can be is in that place. So we will put it in that place. So let's do that. So we will check here. I'm really bad at managing tabs as well, I guess. So after we're done, after we're doing this, excuse me. <coughs> so after we're done with this, we will say for. Um, we will check right now. We have to check which one it is. What I mean by that is, let me just copy the code here because I don't want to write it again. Um, I'm just gonna copy this thing here, and uh, not try to do it. Uh, so, what this code is that I'll go through no one to ten. Okay, so this I actually I'm going through this. So from one to nine actually, uh, then I'll say if 
lookup is actually L table. I call this L table. Lookup table. Add that I location, I index is equal to one. That means there's only one possibility for four maybe. Then we will go through X in that uh, Y. Right? Then we'll check if it's possible to put that I in that X uh, in that place. If it is possible to do that, that means the see because it was one. That means there's only one place where this will be possible. We will print that place so that I can see what's happening. Then we will put that I in that grid, and then we return true because I'll be doing some stuff with it later. But now we will return. But then we'll return false. Okay. So now if I print lookup at zero, right? Can we put something in here? It should return false because as you saw previously. There wasn't a single one with with one. Let's check now. Okay, well, look at this. Oh, and short the spelling mistake. Oh, no, that's just the wrong. L table. So we got back false. But let me just go back here. Uh, there is a place where this is not going to be false, it's going to be true. It's going to be in this list here. Okay, let me just actually see. It's going to be um, in here, I think. Let me check here. I'm going to go, I think it's 101234. One, let me check for, let me look up 4 and see if it works. Yeah, it was possible. So, what was possible? We put a four in zero comma four. Let's see if we can see that. So, in zero comma four, which is zero x zero comma four, here we put a four. The only possibility of four is here. So we put a four here. Now, what we do? Check here as well. Yeah, because see, we cannot put a four here we cannot put a 4 here because it's already in the place so the only place you can put a 4 here is this so there you go so our function works um, now what we have to do is make the final function to solve the entire thing it is actually using recursion so let me just write that function so what we do in here we will say that for uh, y in range 1 to 10 okay we will so for every y we will start with so for every row we will look up the row okay we will look up the row that means that now when we reach 4 here we will actually get true back so actually if we do not get true back we'll get false right so we can actually say if look up if we are if we did something right if we change something let's call solve again this is a recursion and this is it this is the entire code we've done it yes let me just check uh I, if i have missed something nope we haven't uh, yes i did call this gimme because i know i did not know a name for my function so what we'll do let me explain this function to you I don't need to print this now. So if I go back here, what we did was that we let me delete this a little bit. Okay. So we went to so first when solve is called, it will check for the first one second. Is it um it's not correctly it's not correctly written because it should be nine and not that it should be from zero to eight so first it's called y is zero it will look up at the zero right so no changes were made so this will be false so it will not actually call 12 again but when it reaches this here right it will put a four in this place and then call solve again so solve will check now again okay what can it do what can it do what can it do and it will probably do something here because it might something might change 
you know and if something changes again that means we made a improvement we will check again like this every row so we check rows 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 again and again and again and like that we solve it so let's check if our <laughs> code works oh you will i'll actually show you the problem show the problem let's print our not look up let's print the grid after we solve it let's look at our solved grid let's see how good it is right let's run it boom this were the steps that were followed to put the grid to make the thing work and we have got the grid but this doesn't look like a grid it looks like some bunch of lines like what that's why I will need uh, numpy now it's just a module and you can import it like this and I will write as NP which means that I'll shorten the name so now if I go back here uh, I will print it like this I'll make the grid in G equals to 2 NP dot ray you can copy this okay is yes, you don't need to understand it right now because you just did this code and it's great uh, just print G now if you do this it will properly it's just some kind of a formatting thing so now as you can see we completely solved the uh, Sudoku bottle yay look at it we can see that 8 is not repeated any line will not be repeated by anything it is the greatest achievement whoa so I hope you enjoyed the video um, if you have reached and if you watch the entire thing that's great um, <laughs> because I think you're a proper person <laughs> so for you I'm gonna put a uh, poll right there so like should I continue these uh, projects or like should I do some other language maybe JavaScript p5.js badge programming I don't know I'm gonna put some polls up there and uh, you please answer them if you have reached till this far and thanks for watching please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and goodbye